Valencia and the crew and the staff of KCTV, I'd like to welcome you to the second show of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone who called and uh, congratulated us on the first show. We were really pleased and happy that we got through it and everything worked out. And, and we want to thank you for your input on it. And uh, most of it was positive. And we'd like other input if possible. And whenever you have any questions or comments, please call. Uh, tonight we have a really interesting show with uh, Carol Gurney, who's an animal communicator. And uh, she brought her, her dog, Jesse, with us, who's now resting. And we'll see him later. And uh, we have some interesting videos and some beautiful music. And uh, we have some uh, videos of uh, Carol uh, uh, swimming with the dolphins. And she has some information from us that uh, the dolphins communicated to humankind through her. So that should be really interesting. I think it's a beautiful message. I've heard part of it. Uh, I'd also like to remind you that if for some reason you can't watch the whole show tonight for whatever reason, whatever emergency comes up, it's also broadcast uh, on Saturdays. Tonight's Thursday night. This is live. And it's also on Saturday at, uh, at 12.30 in the afternoon. So if you miss any of it, I can't imagine why anybody would, but if it happens, <laughs> You can catch uh, the whole show then. Uh, and uh, also, I'd like to start the show now uh, with, uh, with Stancia, my co-host, uh, doing a, an invocation for the show and a, a short meditation, hopefully, to, to bring us into the, a quiet vibration and a beautiful vibration in which we can really experience something in the show. So, Ms. Stancia? Thank you. So invocations are a way to call to the higher dimensions, to call to the beings of light, the angels and the masters of light on the higher dimensions, and also for ourselves to call to our higher identities and to connect. And invocations bring power to people. They also make changes. So it's one tool that all of us can use, all the humans can use, all of us who live in the third dimension we can use this tool to make changes, to change the atmosphere, to change our heart space, to change our world. And what we are doing is calling forth from where we are in the third dimension to the higher realms to come in and flood us, to light us with higher love and higher light, which is so needed on the earth. So we take this time to open our hearts and call forth to the angel kingdoms calling for the protection of archangel michael to remove all fears and doubts calling for the light of gabriel the resurrecting powers to resurrect ourselves into our divine selves we call forth to archangel raphael for the healing to take place for the humans and for the animals and for the earth and we call to the Ascended Masters also, those beings of light who overlight us and work with us and teach us and will be our friends and our guides if we call to them. And tonight, it's kind of a special night. And so I would like to make a call now to the whales and the dolphins who live in the oceans around Santa Barbara to those great beings, those great creatures that hold the memory of Earth. They are the oldest, perhaps the wisest ones on the planet. And they also have a great service to all of us. The whales hold in their song, they hold intact the biosphere of the Earth. And the dolphins have work that has a lot to do with maintaining the food chain and so we open our hearts and salute the great ones in the oceans asking for you to sing your song to us to take a look upon the shore and notice us standing there watching you to teach us to come into our meditations to come into our dreams at night to help us and we also call to all the animals all the pets, the dogs and cats, the horses, the birds, all the beautiful beings 
in the animal kingdom and asked to be linked up. Angel kingdom, human kingdom, and animal kingdom. Let these energies come now into your heart, into this room, into the studio, into your homes. Link up with your animals in your homes and open the heart. And maybe we can all just step into that open heart, go inside and enter into meditation the way you enter in. So maybe taking a deep breath and just relaxing the body, letting the energies flow, moving into the silent sanctuary now. interesting happened. I got a message, actually a photograph was sent to me from a man living in Houston and his name is Richard Stedman and he sent us a beautiful photograph that we're going to show you in just a second. And this photograph was taken in Sedona and this man was on vacation with his wife and he was taking pictures of the beautiful red hills in Sedona and Look at this picture. Look in the left-hand corner. And the story behind this is so incredible. This man did not know what he was taking a picture of. He was in the car. They were leaving. And he told his wife he needed to take one more picture. And she's, she was kind of cranky at that time and felt like, you've taken so many pictures, can't we just go? And he said, no, I feel really compelled for one more picture. And he went running out of his car and he took this picture and only when he developed the picture did he realize that he had captured the angel and since then he has been told that that was Archangel Gabriel manifesting in the sky um, and actually Gabriel told him to take this picture to the world and it is like a perfect picture of bridging heaven and earth bridging the angel kingdom and the human kingdom and so basically this man has quit his job and now he's like in business making um, posters and greeting cards and his work is now Angels Over Sedona. <laughs> I think it's incredible. Yeah, one more look at that. It was huge. He said it was so huge. And so tonight, we actually have someone, our guest, her name is Carol Gurney, and she is also a bridge. She bridges the animal kingdom and the human kingdom. And a couple of years ago, about three years ago, when my golden retriever, Brianna, was only six months old, I went to her house in San Ynez and had a workshop with her, and she taught me how to communicate with Brianna telepathically. And at that time, I had been working as a channel and telepathically with humans, and it was a whole new dimension for me. She is an interspecies communicator. She works in the United States, in Canada, in Europe. She does lectures, she does workshops, she does group sessions, private sessions, she does telephone consultations, she does body work with animals and teaches it. She's, um, she's really very much in tune with animals and they are with her. And she can really enhance people's lives by teaching this way of communicating. So she's going to be with us right after our, our clip. Well, actually, I think now uh, what we'll do is uh, I'd like to read a, a dolphin poem. Uh, this show, I think, will be uh, not predominantly about dolphins, but uh, one of the things that we have is, is a very beautiful clip of, uh, as I mentioned earlier, of Carol swimming with the dolphins and just to see them. And uh, So I found this poem uh, it's called Dolphin Talk by Robert S. Cave. 
and uh, I thought it would, you know, be a nice poem to read. And then we, uh, 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 Wisconsin will do a short channeling, uh, a dolphin channeling, and then there'll be a, a dolphin clip where we'll see uh, Carol swimming with the dolphin, and then Carol will come out, and then we'll have the opportunity to spend some time with her. So let me uh, do this poem, and we'll proceed from there. <laughs> Do you hear the ocean's song that's sent from creatures old? Do you feel their warm embrace as melodies unfold? The rhythmic pulse of dolphin talk connects the earthly mind to mysteries hidden long ago from most of humankind. The dolphin realms in blue-green depths request you come and play. Now cast your spirit to the sea for them to lead the way. Dive and share some time with them, enjoy this special bond, then be prepared for wondrous sights down in the great beyond. Cities sparkle and temples stand, majestic in their sleep. Pyramids rest on the ocean's floor as guardians of the deep. The ancient ones, the dolphins say, had found the sacred key, but cataclysmic change had brought the land into the sea. Enchanting sights both day and night are there in water land, but you must play with dolphin friends to truly understand. Okay, so now uh, Wisconsin will do a, a channeling that, uh, did you get this channeling from the dolphins? No, or? no, 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 this, I, I was given this by another channel. This isn't something I got directly. And before I read this, and it's really short, just wanted to say that my feeling is that the dolphins and the whales are the guardians of the earth garden. They're considered the stewards of this planet. And actually, that's our job. What I've come to understand through the channeling I've done and the work that I've done with the spiritual hierarchy, that they're waiting to turn that over to us. They're waiting for us to get conscious enough to take care of our planet, to maintain our planet ourselves, to be the stewards, the guardians, of our own planet and in the absence of our um, consciousness you might say they are doing this for us they once were on the land they chose to be in the water and they are looking forward to the day when we will both work together we will work hand in hand or however fin to fin or however you put it with them to take care of earth they come from uh, star system Sirius or Cirrus, I don't know how exactly to say it. Um, and that star system is considered our sisters and brothers. And so they, I think it's Sirius B where they come from. And there's, sounds, a, there's an A and a B. Sounds like a course they took in high school, Sirius B. And they're very, <laughs> very evolved. So here's the channeling. Oh, by the way, cita cetaceans are the dolphins and the whales. We are the cetaceans, living in your oceans. We have found our life to be hard, yet rewarding. We are the gatekeepers. We have grown adept at avoiding the snares in the oceans and have proliferated in spite of this. We wait for the day when you will recognize the beauty and grandeur of Earth and come to appreciate her uniqueness. Then, when you resume your stewardship to her, we will be free to communicate with you on land, and our species will join you as one consciousness caring for the earth. Okay, so as I've said on numerous occasions, <laughs> we do have a, a beautiful clip uh, with some uh, extraordinary music behind it that we put behind it. I think is the music from Michael Hammer. Yes. And he was our guest last week. If it's Michael seen. Hammer and Dolphins. And Dolphins, uh, real sounds of real Dolphins. Real Dolphins. Uh, so I guess we can, you know, roll the cr clip now. And this is of Carol swimming with the Dolphins in the Bahamas. So here it comes. So I hope you enjoy it.
that was really beautiful. So I'm sitting here with Carol Gurney, and I'm also sitting here with Jesse, who I haven't seen in about three years. Looks real excited about seeing you. <laughs> Look how relaxed Jess, Jesse's very relaxed here on the floor. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. So, so tell me about this clip. I mean, I mean, about the dolphins swim? swimming. Um, it was a wonderful experience in that there's no way that you could be around the dolphins on the boat, whether you were in the water or on the boat, without smiling from ear to ear. You, you just can't be around them without grinning and smiling and feeling the instant joy to be around them and the playfulness. Yeah. Um, and they did have some messages and what they had told us was to really, it was all about family about each one of us. They were very grateful for us being out there to really spend time with them, but they wanted us to really go back mm -hmm. and to greet each other and see each other as humans with the same joy and with the same beauty. They didn't want us to leave without doing that with each other. They asked that we swim in formation and as often as possible that we would link hand to hand and join in a circle like you were doing you and were, at the end you saw the clip that yeah oh. absolutely that we would join hands yeah. and then link up heart to heart and just really see the beauty in each other and then they also said that to go home and look at each of your animals at home your dogs your cats the birds etc as though they were the dolphins with the same amount of joy uh, and jubilation and so not to leave that out in the seas. So it was very much about being a, a family again as humans. So it was quite exciting. What was it like to actually swim next to their, their, they're big, aren't they? They're bigger than, than we Well, think, right? we swam with the wild spotted dolphins, mm -hmm. which are smaller. Um, the, the first time that I went there, I, it was my first time snorkeling ever, mm -hmm. first time in an ocean. <gasps> really? I had to jump off the boat. Oh my you, God. You didn't have tanks? You weren't scuba? Didn't, no, we didn't scuba, oh. we just snorkeled. Oh, so you were right on top of Right on time. top. So, so they I, almost had to come to you. They did. Yeah, right. But, but the, um, the captain would see them and say, dolphins, and everybody would get their swimsuits on and get mm -hmm. their gear on, and then we would jump overboard. And basically, um, I was quite fearful. <laughs> I have never swum in the, the ocean, yeah, the ocean. So I had a friend of mine come as so I was gripping her hand and she was taking me around. Really like. But when they got close, yeah. it was just I found myself making noises to them oh. and kind of singing to them. And then I started pulling oh. her along. The rest of the time I was there, the seas were very, very rough. So it, it was a little, it was scary for me at the end of, of the trip, but uh, all in all, it was, it was wonderful. You know, my daughter was um, deep diving 100 feet down in Maui, uh -huh. and she said that the experience of going down with whales, I mean, that, that was, there were whales above her, all on all sides, everywhere. She said it was the most silent time she'd ever experienced in her life. They were singing. Yeah. Whale song was all down there, but she said it brought her into her heart. She said it was the, it was the deepest spiritual experience she'd ever had, yeah. was being surrounded by whales and having to sing. Well, it does when you're, when you're in that energy, um, it makes you just smile. But then also, as you go home, if there is anything that's blocking you from your joy, yeah. I'll tell you, it will come up. Yeah, things will come up so that you will clear out those things that are blocking you to really have that energy and carry that energy so that you can see each other's beauty but also your own and appreciate who you are. So the dolphins have a wonderful message uh, but they really want us to take it home and see each other as we see them. So yeah, you should go next time. <laughs> So, I'd you love actually, to swim with the so you actually um, coordinate swim, dolphin swim? I swims? didn't coordinate it. I was asked to go on this. It was yeah. a dolphin swim project uh, that's held every year mm -hmm. uh, by a woman down in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and she works out of Santa Fe. She coordinates the trips yearly. So she has them constantly. Were you the only coordinator, uh, the communicator? Yes, I was a, one oh. communicator, and then the second trip, there was another animal communicator that would help the people on board get further in touch so with the animals. When you say they communicate with you, how, how do you get the communication? How do they, they, animals communicate to us telepathically through pictures. We may see a scene, we may get words, uh, or a feeling. 
You may go up to a, uh, a dog or a horse or a cat, whatever, and if your mood begins to change and all of a sudden you may feel frustrated or just sad, why did your mood change? It's perhaps that animal is sad about something. So they communicate in all different ways. But you get more specific messages. So how do they come to you and like, in other yeah. words. Well, yeah. it, what animals do, it's, it's a thought. They send you a thought, which you get really fast telepathically. And then you have to put words to best describe what the thought was that you received. Is it a thought in words or more a thought in feelings? Or... It, it, both. 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 So you can get a whole sentence in your head, kind of. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the neat thing about this is, is that everybody already does this. People that are really sensitive to animals already telepathically communicate, but they just don't know that they're doing right, it. Right, they don't call it that. Well, right. they don't know it. An right. example of that, I was at a ranch recently and the woman was um, down. Um, at the riding arena and I was standing there and the horse came by and he looked at me and telepathically said to me Why is it my person riding me? I want her to ride me the woman was having the trainer ride the mm -hmm. horse And so I told him back telepathically. I don't know but I'll find out Later on we talked and she said to me, you know Carol. I wonder why I'm still having my trainer ride my horse I think I'm gonna start riding him again, and I said Cheryl. I bet you think that that's your thought and she oh. said, well, who else could it be, Carol? I said, but it's not your thought. I said, it's your animal's thought. He sent that to you telepathically. You think it's just your thought. But he told me the same thing. What happens is we think it's us, our thought, mm -hmm. because here's a person that's sensitive. You have an opening, and the animal's sending their thought, and it does this. It hooks in mm -hmm. with their thought, and it becomes your thought at that, at that flash. So a lot of people think that they're making it up because it feels like you're talking to yourself, mm -hmm. right. but indeed you're not. And what convinces people or proves it to people is the validation. When you begin to ask animals that you've never seen before, you don't know much about, and if you can ask them specific questions like, uh, what are your favorite activities? Where's your favorite place in the home? Who's your best friend? What are your dislikes? And you can get those messages that can be validated by that person. That's the proof. What, that do you they, need. what do cats say about why they won't eat anything? <laughs> why they won't eat anything? If yeah, they're, they're not... so finicky all That's the time. A good what is, what uh, is their opinion on that, man? <laughs> there's so many. There's no. There's no one answer. They may not like the food, or there may be something going on with them physically. I think they want natural. They want you to cook for them. They want natural food. Or yeah, is that what's possible? I haven't found one that eats anything. More they're than not a happy with the days, cans. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I've discovered lots of things that the animals are trying to. Uh, to teach us and one of the most important things that I've, I've learned from them is they want to teach us how to love ourselves the way they love us Aww. they're our greatest role models and they they show that to us every single day of their lives and they just want us to get it so that sometimes they'll sit and they go why doesn't she love herself why doesn't he love herself why doesn't he appreciate himself and they show that over and over again and that that's the greatest gift we can give our animals is really um, to heal ourselves, to really be accountable for ourselves, to be responsible, mm -hmm. and to get more in touch with our feelings. I mean, how did this, how did you get started? I mean, were you like a little girl and all of a sudden people, dogs were barking? No, were going no, it didn't, ha it didn't happen that way. It didn't happen until very late in my life, actually. And this is very interesting for your audience, is that my veterinarian is the one who introduced me to the whole subject. Oh, really? I had a cat that was displaying unusual behavior, and so I took my cat in to be checked, and he said, Carol, there's nothing physically going on, but I think your cat, there's something going on emotionally. Sad. So he's the one that said there are people that communicate with animals and that I should look one of them up, which I did. That got me involved with the whole subject. And what I basically did was I started practicing. And I decided to take a year off and do some research and find out what did the animals want me to t teach? What was mm -hmm. I supposed to do with this? And there was one particular case history that really taught me a lot about what I do with, with uh, animals and people. The one um, uh, dog would attack people if the woman was present in the room. Mm -hmm. If she took the dog to the veterinarian, if the vet was there with her, they would have to muzzle the dog. But if she left the room, the vet could take the muzzle off and the dog was absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. So what they did was to ask me because they thought, you know, Carol, we're adopting a baby. We're concerned. Oh, would anything okay. happen? Would they right. uh, uh, attack the baby? Yeah. So I asked the dog and the dog couldn't tell me anything. There was absolutely no response. And I asked again and I didn't get anything but a little bit of fear. 
So I told her, I said, I don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. but can we talk about your life, what, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And what I discovered was that they didn't do very much socially. They went to their parents' house and came back, mm -hmm. and that was it. And I said, well, do you go out socially? Well, no, not much. And what she we and discovered, the dog, she, and husband? she and her husband, and she by herself, <laughs> who was dating who, at this didn't point? didn't go out socially. Right. So she a was lot. always there, always alone, and didn't wasn't comfortable with people. And I said, well, why aren't you comfortable? I, I'm have her a feeling fear. that I'm going to get attacked by people. Oh. And uh, all of a sudden, the light bulb went on, and she said, on "This isn't. This Absolutely. isn't. Right. It's not the dog. It's right. me." So the dog couldn't respond to me because he didn't know why he was doing it. He simply loved her and was trying to push the people away from her that she feared would hurt her. Right. So they're like mirrors. Absolutely. So what I discovered is animals will really reflect us. That's Absolutely. why they start to look like <laughs> you. Don't they do? Don't they? They have these contests? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's really, you know, people, a lot of people don't think that animals think. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, I've heard that. I've heard they don't see in color. They don't have thoughts. It's so amazing. I was reading in this one book that animals do and have committed suicide from being so sad. Mm -hmm. And what that told me, I mean, the subject maybe isn't my favorite subject, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. what it told me was, I mean, it's such a proof that they're really thinking about oh, what's going absolutely. on. Absolutely. And they have like the whole chakra system. They're, they're spiritual beings, just like we are. And people forget that. They have auras. Absolutely. In fact, they're probably more tuned in to those other levels than, than a lot of They are, because they're are. more in the moment. Yeah. And they, they live unconditional love, where we as human beings are trying to get there. But they live yeah. it. Some of them, those who haven't been abused and are not mm -hmm. in a survival mode. I mean, are but, some animals smarter than others? or? more in tune and more, Some are more in more tune species. depending on what what their experiences have been. But how about a species is it like the dolphins more I would say the dolphins advanced. are probably more evolved, but yet they didn't want us to think that their dogs or their or your cats at home are not as evolved and spiritual and just have much, just as much to teach you, if not more, I really uh -huh. right, right by being with you as a partnership in your own home. Uh -huh. I really love that they don't want to be put on a pedestal because I know they are really grand beings, mm -hmm. giant beings. They've carried the earth, you know, Absolutely. on their backs. Well, but, yeah. but yet they want us to love, you know, mm -hmm. our doggies and kitties and everybody, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. everyone. In fact, um, I think we're about ready for a clip on a little bird clip that I wanted to show. It's re it's really sweet because even the bird. Can you talk to birds? Yes, yes, she talks to birds. Um, so anyway, this is this is a sweet little bird that fell out of a nest at my house, and I held this bird for five hours trying to talk to the bird, trying to figure out what to do. This bird could not fly. It was perfectly healthy, but just couldn't fly, and so I. Um, <laughs> Finally hooked the bird up with somebody else, and I don't know what's happening with the clip, but this well, little wait, bird. Uh, the beginning of the clip is the swallows that you know. This, yeah. Right. That's their nests and. Right. The little one fell out of the nest, and I had this incredible experience. You know, of five hours, I meditated with the bird. The bird totally trusted me. I told the bird about. I told my dog about the bird, and my dog came and actually put her head in my lap and was licking the little bird and we were trying to find a nest you know or some way that we could like get this little bird home i even took the little bird out on my balcony and i actually tried to teach this little bird how to fly there's also a scene in there where uh Wisconsin's cat wants to communicate with the bird <laughs> it in its own way in a real primitive way in a real Earthly primitive mm -hmm. way wanted to express this experience of the bird. Along the food chain. So yeah, he wanted to deal with the food chain experience. <laughs> okay, so maybe we'll see it now. Here it comes. Here we go. So that's the action.
Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people in the audience now would like to, to uh, know uh, from Carol what they can do. I mean, a lot of people have animals. We've been uh, doing some things with some uh, pet food products with Stancy and I in another, another incarnation, it seems. But, uh, and uh, it's enormous how many people have, how many families and people have cats and dogs and all other kinds of animals. I mean, the, the, the pet industry and the, you know, people just caring about their pets is enormous. So. So could you like tell people what you know how they could respond to their pets in a more conscious way, in a more loving, communicative way? Yeah, I would. I would really suggest that in the morning when uh, people are waking up, to um, close your eyes, get, get in a meditative state, take lots of deep breaths, and allow your animals to be around you. And then, if they would sink down into their heart center, and just focus, just allow yourself to be with your animal. What would it be like? to be with your dog, your cat, your horse, or your bird in total silence and really just see how it feels to be with them. And then after you do that, is pose a question to them. You know, how did they feel about um, where they used to live or how do they feel about the other animals in your household? When you ask the question, you just imagine that it's going out from your heart onto the animal and then what you do is you, re you just sit there quietly and wait. Wait, it may, you may see a scene, you may get a picture, you may get feelings, you may get words. But the first thing always is to ask them, are you willing to communicate with me? They may not want to that day, but so ask them first. The best thing to do is practice with people's animals that you don't know, because that's where you can get your validation. Mm -hmm. And ask them things that, such as, what are your favorite activities? What are your dislikes? What's your best place in the house? What's your relationship like with the other animals? Uh, things of that nature and hopefully we'll be able to do that a little bit with uh, with the audience here in a little bit and see how they can get some information with uh, with Jesse the other thing that I would encourage people to do is learn their language it's not difficult we all did this we're born with the ability it's not just a gift that I have it's just that I have practiced and to know that the main skill is to quiet the mind because we process 40,000 thoughts a day that's a whole lot of I thinking. I thought you were going to say a minute. I just, <laughs> really, I, I was... You were, you were up to right, 40,000. Right, I was up to 40,000 a minute. And I was holding... Yeah, if you only do 40,000 a day, you're quiet. <laughs> and with, I guarantee you're quiet. With you that kind 40, of talking in our mind, when an animal tries to ring us up, if we were to compare ourselves to a telephone, if they were to ring us up, busy. they would get a busy signal. Right. So our job is to get do? off the line. How many do they do with that? Less, 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 much, much less. Well, you do less than me, so they do right. less than you. Maybe that's why you can communicate with them. So that's the main thing is just learn how to be quiet and still. Yeah. And we human beings have a real tough time doing that. It's real challenging for us because we really should be called human doers rather than human right. beings. Busyness. So, yeah, but we need to learn that right. for ourselves as well. Yeah. And I would ask them to give their animals a job. Give them a responsibility to do in the household. Animals love to have something to do. If your dog, if your dog loves to work with children, loves children, mm -hmm. ask your dog to take care of the kids when they're in the backyard. Feed themselves. <laughs> right, although we can. The other thing is to give, give your animal information. If you're taking your animal to the vet, tell them what's happening. Tell them that they're going to be left overnight. Right. Um, it's real important that they have information so that they know what's happening. If you're going on vacation, tell them when, and then picture yourself coming through the door, really happy to see them again, so that they concentrate on your coming back versus your leaving. I always tell Brianna, I'm, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. And I actually, like, because you taught me this, actually send out a picture Mental of image. me walking into my car and going down the hill and then the car coming back up the hill. Yeah. I always say right back, even if it's like six hours. You can say yeah. six hours then. You can, I you can, can say six hours? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely, that would be wonderful. Put a little watch on her. <laughs> She's oh, alarm clock. Hey, mom's due back. <laughs> She's, She's late. late. <laughs> She's always <laughs> waiting. <laughs> That's great. So, should we go to try with the audience? Yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, and we have a mic over there. We could try it. We haven't done it before, but okay. this is experimental television. <laughs> we'll yeah. go for it. Anybody have any questions over there? Is the mic there? Well, what we'll do, let, let's just take yeah, a couple Carol of seconds do it. to get us quiet mentally because we have to quiet our, ourselves in our minds. So, if we can just take a couple of deep breaths, just allowing all of the thoughts of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to just drift on by. 
And just allowing ourselves to breathe deeply into our bodies. And if we feel any tension in our neck or shoulder, just breathe into that area and let it go. And then eventually just sink all of your energy down into your heart center. Just as though there was this wonderful, wonderful rose there that was opening up and blooming and spreading its petals so that your heart can remain as open as possible. And then what it's like is that you're reaching out from your heart to Jessie and just allowing yourselves to blend with her in total silence. And then in your mind, we'll ask Jessie a question. So you formulate the question in your mind and let's ask Jessie, Jessie, what are your favorite activities? What do you like to do the most? And imagine that those words are going out from your heart and just going right on Jesse. And then what we do is we simply wait in a sense of relaxation and quiet and just wait for a response. See if you might get pictures, words, feelings, impressions. Anybody, if anybody has gotten a message, you can just ask for the mic and let us know if you received a message from Jesse. And to know that this isn't a test, it's just an experience one of joy. <laughs> Anybody get anything from Jesse? Okay, yeah. She communicated to me that uh, she likes to be very active outdoors. She likes to run, she likes to chase things, she likes things where she runs up hill. Uh, and as kind of an afterthought, it seemed to be that this is partly therapy because she's kind of high strung and nervous sometimes. Uh -huh. And this helps her kind of work it off and get relaxed. Okay. Not now. Okay. <laughs> right <job. laughs> I'm she's to in the of 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 right now. Very good. Very good. That's excellent. Jesse, I live on a hill. I have horse property. And Jesse, one of her favorite activities is to run. And she runs all over the property, guarding the property, and absolutely enjoys it and chases the rabbits and squirrels. She doesn't c catch them, but she does chase them on the property. Excellent. Did you see that? Was that a picture that you got? Uh, the first part of it, the actual activity, was a picture. Okay. Um, the reason why she likes that kind of pain in words. Okay. Good. Good. Excellent. And you can get a combination. You can get words, pictures, feelings, etc. Anybody else get anything? from Jesse? Yeah. Does, does Jesse have to be awake for no, 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 animals don't. You don't have to have the eye contact, but you do, because Jesse has done so many workshops with me, I know she's willing to communicate. If this were an animal that we didn't know, we would first ask, are you willing to communicate with us? We ask permission first, but she's she's very willing because she's done it a lot. Yes, go ahead. Very short. Okay. A ball. A ball. A ball just goes right into my head. That's the only okay. Impression. Okay. She's got a red ball at home. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm like a, a tether, like a little handheld thing. And she's got a tennis ball also. So she has two balls at home. Very good. Anybody else? Yeah. Well, actually, I was thinking, um, what is her favorite treat? And then the thing that popped into my mind was running on the beach. Okay, that's really interesting. I've taken her to the beach twice, and it's something that we don't do a lot, but when I have people ask this question, she'll continue to say beach and beach, and it's like she wants me to, yeah, she wants to go back. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you listen to her? Right, I know, exactly. 
You communicator, you. I don't know. She keeps saying the same thing, workshop after workshop, and she can't get to the beach. Oh, no. Look, wake up, Jesse. Wake her up. That's great. That's great. This is what it would be like to to go home and practice uh, with your animals. And remember, it's easier communicating with animals that you don't know at times because you get the validation. And uh, sometimes it's a little more challenging or difficult with our own animals because we're emotionally tied in and sometimes that in itself presents a block. So, so in other words, if there's some kind of attachment that would set up a does. blockage because you want to hear a certain thing. Yes, because you already have right. a preconceived notion. Right. But it's like any language, their uh, learning telepathy is like learning Spanish or Italian or French. And what it, what it um, demands from us is practice. You can't possibly take a one Spanish class and speak right. fluently. This is something that you need to build on year after do year. Do predators, I mean, you know, the predator and the prey, do they talk to each other? Do they communicate? I mean, how do, how do they do that to the business? Well, you know, what I, have, what I have heard, because I haven't talked to them directly in the right. exchange of that, but what I have heard is that there is an agreement. One does agree to give up its life at that time, just as with the Aborigines and with the Native American. That animal agrees to give up its life to that person so they mm -hmm. can have it for food and, and clothing and, and so forth. And that's what the Native Americans did was they honored the animals when they uh -huh. took the animal. And they sought that one that was ready to give up its life. So when I, you know, I told you about the coyotes coming down mm -hmm. from the hills and I go out there and I, you know, I tell them, no, you can't come to my house and my animals will be protected. And I interfere. Hearing maybe an agreement, I'm prolonging an agreement, or no, no. You can just uh, what I would do is just keep encouraging them to move from your home and go back into the hills. Go to and... someone else's home. <laughs> I always bless them and tell them I, I want them to find what they're looking for. It's just that they cannot. My animals will not be food. I have made the decision that my animals will not be food for them. Yeah. Unfortunately, what's happened is we have taken the their our land. their right. their land. We have right. taken away their supermarkets. Right. So what's happening? They are coming. Uh, from the hills, the mountain lions that are coming down, the bears and so forth. I mean, they want to live just as much as, as we do. I know. And I know. so we just need to be conscious again of what we're doing, of that then when we bulldoze that land, we're really taking away their land right. of animals that we don't even see that are underneath the earth. And we need to pay attention to that. You know, that, that's a serious issue. Yeah, if we experience them more as brothers and sisters Absolutely. on the planet, we would be less apt to be tearing things up the way we do. Absolutely, yeah. And that that's when we're going to get back to the wholeness again, the wholeness right, of the being who we are. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. To be real conscious of that. Yeah, animals are already in the wholeness, aren't they? Absolutely. They're very much. I mean, there is such a big push right now with animals, uh, people getting back to nature, mm -hmm. uh, people doing the telepathy with animals, mm -hmm. because they do represent our spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, they've been waiting for such a long time for us to recognize the earth as a living being, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to recognize nature. Because we can certainly, we cannot live without nature, nature can live without us. Right. So we, we really need to get back to that. And, and the animals are holding that vibration and energy for us to once again say, hey, it's like a big wake up call for mm -hmm. us, you know? So you find your workshops that you give more more populated now, more and more people are interested, and more and more demand. Absolutely. Um, the, the workshops, uh, people know that they can do this, and when they get the um, encouragement and the validation at the workshop, you can take something that you can't see and, or feel in touch mm -hmm. and make it real for them. You know, when mm -hmm. they get the things that they do from Jesse or my horse or whatever, it's just like, oh my God, I can really do this. But again, what mm -hmm. you need to do is practice with it. And uh, what's wonderful is that we'll actually be doing a workshop up in Santa Barbara uh, come August 20th. Great. And so we have this is that all just of one day or a weekend? That's a one day workshop, but we also have a training program for people who want to do this professionally mm -hmm. or who want to go beyond that and find out about lost animals, about the issue of death and dying. How do you communicate with an animal that's not here in the room? And that's what I do. I communicate with animals all over the United that. States and Europe. Yeah. She works over the phone, mm -hmm, you know? mm -hmm. long distance. Yeah. And also the body work. That's one. That's something I'm. I'm kind of interested in. The body work is is wonderful. It, it kind of goes hand in hand, especially with people who have um, horses who are athletes, mm -hmm. knowing that with athletes, you know, their bodies uh, need help. Their muscles, their um, structural uh, makeup. 
they need assistance, yeah. you know, to keep them in shape and so right. forth for better performance. So um, we have workshops teaching people that, and that's actually coming up this week, uh, the 12th and 13th in, of July at my home. That's and in Agora. It's in yeah. Agora. You yeah. can find out about their chakra system, uh, how to feel their energy, where the energy is stagnant and not yeah. moving, right. where their points of discomfort are, and, and how to help them. Okay, well, you know, thank you for all this information. It's pretty incredible. You're welcome. Thank yeah. you for inviting me to be here with Jesse. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Jesse. <laughs> Jesse, we can all thank Jesse. Jesse's right. a little camera shy, so uh, all right. Well, I'd like to, you know, certainly thank uh, Carol for coming, and I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, you know, if you have any questions about, you know, anything we talked about tonight, I mean, uh, you can call. I'm the uh, co-producer, so I mean, you call me, and the number will scroll by at the end of the show. And if you know, there's any information you'd like, I certainly would give it to you about uh, uh, Carol's uh, workshops or or anything that you've seen in, in this show or the show last week uh, or any comments you have at all. Uh, next week we have an interesting show. It's Robert Williams who's uh, been a spiritual seeker and a teacher for a long time and does healing through subliminal music and so that should be interesting. We have some beautiful videos and some nice music uh, also with that so I mean and, and again it should be a really nice show. And then tentatively, I heard today that uh, in two weeks, two weeks from tonight, uh, we have uh, the Carlos Castaneda's people uh, who are teaching different movements. Uh, they're called shock mules, uh, which means guardians. And it's a, a series of movements called Tensegrity. And uh, they've tentatively agreed to come on uh, July 20th. and. Uh, demonstrate some of the movements and show the video and talk about it and talk about their experiences with uh, being apprentices with Carlos uh, for the last uh, I guess uh, 12 or so years so that should be an exciting show and uh, the tape is very powerful I've seen it uh, the Tensegrity tape so you know hopefully we'll be able to do that so and again uh, Saturday if you want to see the show again or you miss something that Carol said and you'd like to see it again or you miss something that I said which I doubt what Wisconsin said uh, it's on Saturday at 12:30 and you know you can see it and good night and good night uh, and you know we hope to see you next week and you know we hope you enjoyed the show and we certainly enjoyed bringing it to you and, you know, thanks again for, for watching. So good night and be well and God bless.